Hello, Eris. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. How are you? How is your week going? My week is going good. You okay. Know, this, today's feel, this feels like a Monday. So Yeah. You know, you are one of my favorites, not only because of just your story and your relationship, but also I feel like you're one of the few that is, is not afraid to clap back on the internet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I try not to clap back, but man, it's just it's very difficult, but I appreciate it. Thank you. I could, I could imagine to kind of be like a low key regular person. And all of a sudden you got a million people in your business. Like I could imagine yeah. how, how that happens. But first of all, since last episode, we saw you and Cameron finally got married. How is married life going? How is the, the home married life is amazing. I mean, I just, I, I really just, you know, married my best friend. Mm -hmm. um we was already best friends before so honestly it's just like we just added a title to it so yeah. and now we live together I don't do the whole shacking up thing before <laughs> yeah. marriage so I think we did it the right way mm -hmm. now did you 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 shared in the episode that you were kind of afraid of how to tell your dad I guess, like, how has he kind of warmed up? Has he warmed up to, <laughs> to you guys? I was a little difficult uh, mm -hmm. sharing that with my dad. Cause I mean, I am a military brat. My dad is in the Navy um, and he's been very strict. I'm his only daughter. And he's also been incarcerated too. So mm -hmm. he just kind of knows like, you know, let's not, I don't think you should do that maybe you should find somebody else. And also my brother, he was incarcerated in the feds for 15 years as well. So um, he kind of is like, he knows the signs of people that's going to try to play you, but he doesn't really know Cameron that well. But since I've been married, I told my dad and he definitely warmed up pretty well to Cameron. He's excited to meet him. They haven't met yet. My dad lives on the West Coast. So. Okay. But they, they're definitely, they've talked on the phone a few different times. They're definitely excited to meet each other. Now, on the flip side, with his family, uh, watching the show, the only sisters you saw before was like Derek's sisters, right? And mm -hmm. being crazy, whatever. So to me, it was a breath of fresh air to see Cameron's sisters. Mm -hmm. They were just lively, you know, like, how is your relationship with them? Um, I, I have a really good relationship with my sister-in-laws, mm -hmm. mainly because they know how how hard I go for Cameron. I went hard for Cameron when he was in prison and I'm still going hard for Cameron uh, to this day. Mm -hmm. So they see the love that I have for Cameron and it hasn't changed. They see how much I care for him and how much, you know, I'm going to always have his back. And um, they like this side of Cameron. Like they, they feel like this is a completely different side. They've never seen their brother and they're, they're loving it. They're happy for him so I have a great relationship with my sister-in-laws we talk to each other um all the time so they're amazing I appreciate them yeah when you um when we watched the episode we saw I guess where his friends were kind of like oh you was yelling at me when I was in a relationship like are you cool with them or <laughs> did that kind of um, guard um his friends yeah I, one of his friends name is Eris too mm -hmm. and me and him actually were we're friends and before I met Cameron okay. and um, I actually knew Cameron a little bit before, you know, he was incarcerated. So mm -hmm. that was our mutual friend. And then, you know, me and Cameron just ended up getting together, just yeah. we're not really getting together, but we ended up becoming friends and then it kind of, you know, rolled into something a little bit more. So a lot of, I know you've obviously been on social media, like when that show airs, everyone wants to give their opinions, but a lot of women ask, how does she know this person is not just using her, right? Like if when mm -hmm. a lot of women, when they um, get involved with the inmate, I guess some get played and some mm -hmm. have the real thing. What was the moment you knew that it was the real thing? Um, Cameron didn't really ask for much. Mm -hmm. He, you know, I, I hear his friends like, you know, we talk on the phone a lot. So yeah. I hear his friends asking for different things from other girls and different girls. And I just knew that he, like, I was going, I, we started talking in 2020 mm -hmm. and 2020 was a rough year for everybody. And I was, you know, going through different 
jobs at the time, I didn't have much. So that was the reason why I did take out my 401k so I could support myself, my child. And then now I'm starting a relationship with somebody that's incarcerated. So I want to be able to talk to him because he was like my peace. And um, through all that craziness that was going on in 2020, but I knew he didn't, he wasn't using me when he didn't ask for much. He wasn't always like asking, can you send me this? Can you send me that? It was kind of like, I could tell he needed something and I would just do it on the humble. But if I didn't have it, I didn't have it. And he would never like beg me for it or try to figure out how I could get it. He just wasn't never really pressed on it. So I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it, Cameron Moore. So um, because he was kind of like my crutch when I was going through a lot of depression in 2020, just like everybody else was. I mean, it was just a rough year. So I kind of realized like, man, this dude is really for me because he's going through his own thing in prison. Ain't no way he could, you know, give me that emotional support. And he was, he was everything. Yeah. yeah. Now, I I like how you kind of spotlighted um, the relationship of your daughter and Cameron. But mm -hmm. I think, I want to say I saw one of them T pages that I think you wrote on your Instagram that that wasn't actually their first time meeting. Is that correct? No, yeah, it wasn't their first time meeting. Um, that was their first time meeting on camera. Mm, so okay. if things don't, if things happen off camera, they want us to do it on camera as if it happened for the very first time. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh my God, I can't believe she's just now introducing him the day before the wedding. They met so many different times before. <laughs> <laughs> off camera but yeah. you know we we have to make it look like as you know to the fans of yeah. course but um yeah he he did time in a halfway house mm -hmm. we would go and visit him um outside we, he had time away from the halfway house to where he could hang out with us do different activities he met my mom before there was no way I was going to like my daughter is my everything Lena she's my everything she's my whole world so, and she's the most, she's protected under me. Mm -hmm. There was no way I was going to marry somebody and then not meet my daughter, who's the most important person to me in this whole entire world. And my mom, like yeah. my daddy's in a different state. So that's going to come. But those two women right there in my life are most important. And I made sure to make it my, you know, duty to make sure that they meet each other. Yeah. Now, now that you've explained that they want to show the whole process is over again on TV, mm -hmm. that obviously opens a lot of room for people to misinterpret things <laughs> and again, mm -hmm. put in their two cents and, you know, say whatever mm -hmm. they want on the internet. So, mm -hmm. like I said, Eric's one of my favorites because you clap back, like she got a problem <laughs> and send, send people straight. But out of everything you've seen, whether you keep up with it or not, while the show airs, mm -hmm. what's probably like the craziest, most untrue opinion oh or God. something you've seen about about there's you or, so or your child or what oh lord there's so many opinions and um there was one I seen one that somebody a blogger said that I had a, another child that I was hiding and I'm like well, my mom called me and was like do you have another baby that I don't know about and I'm like no I'm like yeah. what are you talking about we was laughing about it going back and forth I thought that was hilarious mm -hmm. like I posted a picture of um, my friend's daughter and my daughter having their feet up on me laying down. I said, my babies. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they'll just take it and run with it. Like her babies. So she has another daughter that she not mm -hmm. talking about. No, yeah. those, you know, just like you have friends. I'm pretty sure you call it their babies, your babies. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's my baby. So I call my nieces and nephews, my babies, but I don't have an extra baby out there just lingering that I'm not claiming it's the same uh, thing like cousins like them. black people will be like that's my cousin like no. right <laughs> that's your home <laughs> like, exactly. what are some what is some I guess advice you would have for any woman dealing with someone who just is transitioning back to being you know a civilian a civilian life um patience is key like you have to have a lot of patience with these guys because in their mind, they're just, you know, they're just now getting back to that social media lifestyle. They want to post everything, <laughs> even if it's like $5, you know, they <laughs> have money in prison. So 
they just want to post everything that they have. You know, I still get on camera. He's been out for almost a year now. I still get on camera to this day. Like you have to wear everything that's like brand new out of the closet to work. And he's like, well, it's not like I'm gonna wear it anywhere else. I'm like, yeah. well, you just really got to have patience with um, these people that are getting out of prison because they, a lot, their freedom is stripped from them. Yeah. And you know, we kind of take that for granted because we have our freedom and we've been having our freedom. So when we're dealing with somebody that's institutionalized and been incarcerated for, it doesn't even matter. My husband was incarcerated for 30 months and he kind of got in that mind frame. Like, so I just realized that I have to have a lot of patience with him and make sure that he's staying out of trouble. When I say mothering, it's not necessarily having to um, baby him or you know saying that he's immature or any type of way it's just I just really want to make sure that this person is staying out of trouble so we can continue to build you know this relationship outside of what we've already started so that's the best advice that I could give to somebody I mean I bought him a $300 pair of Jordans for uh, Christmas and he wore them to work. I'm like, no, you're not supposed to wear those to work. <laughs> supposed to wear them when we go out, do stuff, yeah. you know. But they don't. They don't. They really don't have those type of things. All that stuff is taken away from them. Yeah. So I'm there. I'm still learning. Listen, yeah. but <laughs> it's impressive. One thing uh, everyone got to see was your guys' wedding this last mm-hmm. episode, and even you said it was just very kind of rushed, you know, kind of like put together. So. A lot of people want to know, are you going to do a, another traditional, bigger, everyone's invited wedding or what? That's interesting you asked that because Cameron said that the same thing to me last night when we was in bed. And I'm like, wait, like, I thought that you were okay with the wedding that we had. I was perfectly fine with the wedding that we had. Um, the location changed at the very last minute. We were supposed to actually have it on this beautiful bridge in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. And um, Janet Jackson and Tank was in town. The whole city was shut down. Oh, Janet Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Janet Jackson shut the whole... <laughs> of course, my house phone wants to ring. Um, but as far as doing a wedding redo, mm, oh my God, that's so annoying. <laughs> I should turn that ring off. Um, we, I don't really want to do a wedding redo. Cameron kind of wants to do a wedding redo because I mean he has all his friends and family. He has a huge family. My family's really small, and um, I was okay with the people that was there, like my mom, my niece. Um, but I'd rather do like a vow renewal more than anything than a wedding redo. Just because I was very perfect with the wedding that we end up having. Um, it might have looked crazy to other people, but I mean, with Janet Jackson being in town and shutting down the bridge and stuff yeah. like that, we we worked with what we had and it was amazing overall. It was amazing. That's not anything that I think I would even think about redoing just because it was just perfect the first time around. Mm-hmm. Well, with um, in that after last episode, we saw the trailer for life after lockup you guys are continuing your story yeah. <laughs> for that is there any insight you can give us without giving too much away like what kind of situations y'all are going to deal with what's are you moving are you say are you staying in cincinnati what's happening oh hell no i would never move to ohio i'm staying in florida <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> i'm staying in florida um It's going to be an explosive season. It is definitely going to be a really good one. You kind of get to see me and Cameron interact a little bit more together, living with each other and married. Um, So that's going to be, and and then being around, hopefully being able to interact with my Florida family. I've built a lifestyle and got family down here too. So interacting with my Florida family so it's going to be it's going to be a really great season okay I mean, love after lockup was a good season but life yeah. after lockup will be a better one <laughs> what is we saw you talk about kind of setting boundaries with him because of his like artist lifestyle you know he was talking about shooting a video strippers and all that <laughs> whatever what is uh what are some boundaries 
I guess you've had to set now that he is out? Has he shot videos? Has he, we saw you go to the studio with him and like uh -huh. he was a little bit, but is there anything you're like, maybe we should calm down on that? <laughs> um, Not really, cause Cameron's so respectful of mm -hmm. me, of our relationship. I don't really have to tell him like, all right, no hoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was like, you know, he was fresh out. So he's all excited. Y'all yeah, mm -hmm. want ass and titties everywhere. Like, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But all the extra aesthetics, like, relax on that, bro. Mm -hmm. So I think he's he's very respectful of those things. Um, Kim is just really just trying to work on his music and put his music out there. He has so many different projects that he's just been working on and recording. And he's just ready to just throw it out there. Um, so looking to shoot more videos and and um record more of just these things that he's written but um yeah definitely we already have those boundaries like he knows what I'm not gonna go for Cameron knows his wife <laughs> he knows his friend like I'm not gonna go for certain shit dude mm -hmm. like so um just respect that and then we'll be all right yeah I don't know if I'm sure you watched the show, but I don't know if you saw the episode where Justine and Michael, Michael's manager was like, you got to take the ring off because it doesn't mm -hmm. match your image. Is Eric going, going for that or no? Um, uh, Hell no, no. He, <laughs> and he wears his ring proudly. Like I bought him two rings and he had a second ring on today. I'm like, wait, why you got both rings? Like, mm -hmm. So he wears his ring proudly. I don't think Cameron would ever take off his ring. I mean, he just loves it. So mm -hmm. I think he he wears it like a medal. So um. I doubt that even if he were to take off his ring, that's not going to stop bitches and hoes from all up in his inbox or whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They look at it as like, oh, that's a challenge. I'm about to see if I can get him. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, he's not going to ever take off his ring. I don't care what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the rapper lifestyle, have they had to do a groupies yet? Has it, have they come out the woodworks yet? Um, he's told me about a few different people inboxing him and you know I expect it so yeah. I'm not too worried about it because I'm very solid in my relationship and my marriage so I ain't worried about it I mean I mean if it if y'all overstep boundaries then I'm not have to step to y'all but because <laughs> Aaron's gonna clap back man <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> what is um I think people link you if anyone, the fact that he was just in Cincinnati and Derek was in, was it Cleveland? Cleveland, yeah. Yeah, people just kind of like link y'all together or maybe just because you're the black girls on the show. I don't know. But like, <laughs> are you cool with anyone else on the show? Any couple, like obviously Monique and Derek or Gabby? Just um, them? I haven't really talked to many couples on the show except mm -hmm. for Monique. Like, I feel like me and Monique, me and Monique had the same producers, so um we kind of like connected on that and then as the show progressed and I seen her getting a lot of negativity I'm just like reaching out to her like I got you like if you ever need to talk try to ignore all these trolls um and we've definitely I feel like we've definitely built um a bond on that because I mean it's tough dealing with a lot of different trolls and people just judging you based off of what they see versus if they even know you mm -hmm. um but Monique seems like a super solid individual and I would love to hang out with her, like, you know, in person, kick it with her. She seems super, super dope. So her I and saying, I was saying they should do like a reunion or something because y'all never really meet each other, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of difficult with all the felons, you know, they can't be around <laughs> each other. Um, can't, can't be around each other. <laughs> exactly. They can't be around each other at all. So that that would be that would be very difficult. But I think it would also be dope once everybody can be around each other. I think it would be a, a really cool experience. Okay. Is there anything at this point that you regret sharing? Um, I think a a big trigger point it was trending is when obviously camera proposed and it was in front of the jail and it, the girls were like hell no nah. like, <laughs> is, is there anything that you regret or that you wish happened differently so far like oh god the proposal in front of the detention center I was pissed that day I was pissed off I was like I was like y'all gotta be kidding me like 
it, we had to really shoot that a few different times because I was really mad. And um, that's why I kept my sunglasses on because my when I'm mad, you can see it all over my face. Mm-hmm. Like my face won't lie. And um, they, they really pushed that. Like, this is where we're supposed to have it. Like, mm-hmm. and even he was against it. Like, nah, you know, although he've already proposed to me before, you know, we got to do things all over again. They wanted it right there. And I was like, this is ghetto as fuck. Like, and I'm not with this shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So when I'm against it, they kind of go for it, push it harder. And I'm like, all right, fine, let's get it done. Um, but the type of person that I am, I really wasn't with that whole proposal in front of the detention center. But things take a completely different turn for life after so you know um it's a lot of making up that he's done for that all the the, the extra bullshit during life (laughs) it kind of seems like if something happens and they see you have a genuine emotional reaction they're like oh we gotta we gotta we gotta get this we gotta Mm -hmm. make it happen (laughs) and Mm -hmm. that's exactly what it portrayed on tv and obviously like on twitter and everything yeah. I know you said that you're you reached out to Monique and stuff, but is even if you haven't reached out to them, is there anyone, any other couple on the show that you maybe relate to or you're just really into their story as well when you watch it? With my season or any other with, season? With, with your season, like of Love After Lockup. Um me and Monique, that's my girl right there. Yeah. Like, her hair be laid, her makeup be on point. Yeah. <laughs> that's my girl. I'm like, we be represented. Yeah. Um I feel like me and Justine would definitely probably get along too because mm-hmm. we're both, you know, dating rappers. So for sure, yeah. Um, you know, uh, and then we both are parents, moms as well. So um, and how that that transition was with how she, you know, had her children meet her husband and everything like that. So I would probably want to talk to Justine if anybody else outside of Monique. Yeah. I think that your like your story and Monique's story to me is most interesting. One, just because of you being from Tampa and how animated Cameron is. I'm like, okay. Oh my gosh. Like yeah. <laughs> we're polar opposites. Me and Cameron, I don't know if any if the viewers, the viewers probably could tell. Like I'm just really chill, laid back, and you know, very quiet. And Cameron's just this loud, bubbly personality. And I'm just like, okay. But him and my daughter have the same personality. So I was like, these two are perfect. And then there's me on the other. <laughs> and my only friend has been Franklin. Yeah. Chandeliers in my trap spot. She got the muffins. I'm the muffin man. Yeah. Six cents. I see dead people. Bank roll too big for a rubber band. Check a bag.